Welcome to the Lou Catino Show, where we can learn to reimagine our lifestyle. Sister Shivani, good morning. Om Shanti and good morning. It's a pleasure to have you today. Thank you. I just keep remembering all the last times that we met and these little nuggets of wisdom that have been planted in my mind and my team's mind as well. And I have to tell you, we have a lot of our patients who follow your work, and especially after we did that conference on breast cancer, and a lot of our followers in the United States of America and other, other countries started following your work and using and listening, your, listening to your videos while they were going through their chemotherapy and their radiation, and it's been nothing short of phenomenal. So thank you for your time today. The vision of our show is very simple. It's called Reimagine Your Lifestyle. Right now, there are people out there who are seeking, searching for answers. There are people who are confused, a lot of us, including myself sometimes. And the point is, how do we reconnect with our spirit? Right. What is the spirit that helps us thrive when there's instability in our life and everything's falling apart? But sister, before we get into that, I would love, I would love to hear about your journey into spirituality and if there was that moment, that one moment or that one instant in your life that actually moved you onto a path, not just of spirituality, but to teach and give back to so many people across the world. I've never chosen it, actually. Mm -hmm. I never wanted it, I think. Or maybe I felt I didn't need it. I'm talking about 30 years back. So 30 years back, the world was very different from today. Student life was simple. As long as you're doing academically fine, there was no word as stress. And there was no word stress actually at that time. It was only in physics. In emotions, we would only say tension one day before the exam, mm -hmm. a little before the result. Otherwise, quite a simple life, quite a simple world. So it's my mother who started practicing meditation. And then, you know, because she benefited, it would be like, you also must try, you also must try. And I was like, why should I try? Just because you're liking it. So I'm not interested in it. So she spent quite a few years trying to tell me that you must try, it's very useful. I said, I don't need, my life is perfect. But the change that I started seeing in her, and also probably her vibration at home. See, we all carry our aura. Yes. So whatever we are thinking, speaking, behaving, doing, we're radiating that energy. So that energy at home, and now, which I realized much later, I didn't realize that that time, she was the one cooking for us. So the one who cooks for us, their state of mind directly influences us because their vibrations are a part of the meal. So in Hindi, there is a line which says, Jaisa An, Vaisa Man, or Jaisa Man, Vaisa An. So the mind of the person cooking, predominant vibration, will influence the people who eat. So after a few years, just one day, without any reason, nothing wrong, not seeking anything, just one day I just said, okay, I also now want to learn what you're doing. Just, I still reflect and I say like, why did I say that? But that's why I know it's a lot of power of the vibrations of the other person, the influence of the vibrations of the food that you're eating three times a day, what that person has cooked. And so I just said, I want to try it out. I started on the journey, being from a scientific background, I was looking for a lot of logic in everything, but I wanted scientific proof. So if someone teaches me, you're a soul, then I'll ask them to prove it scientifically. Mm. And everything can't be scientifically proved. It's more experiential. But coming from that engineering background, I thought everything has to be proved scientifically. So it took me some time. So I would say it would take me a couple of years to even okay. say that I have started the journey. But there was no aha moment for me. It's been so gradual, so gradual. And they just kept telling me, the sisters at the center, three months, don't think. Just do, mm -hmm. and you will experience the result. That'll be your proof for you. Nobody else can prove anything to you. That will be your proof to you. Do it like an experiment. And then one of them told me, even in your maths, you do the same thing. Assume A is equal to B, then do the whole thing, and in the end say, therefore, A is equal to B. So you have to start with an assumption. So she said, assume I am a soul, now start. So that's how I started. So it's been a very, very gradual, slow journey. It's been about... 26, 27 years now. Wow. And the sharing also was gradual. No plan again. That is natural. Once you benefit from something, you start talking to people about it. And then I came to the retreat center here, which is in Delhi. And it started with small groups talking about what we, you know, what we are experiencing. Then it became a little bigger session. 
and then I started taking care of the programs in the Brahma Kumari studios, but programs back end. Okay. You know, the management, the organizing, the doing everything. And then just one day, the main person who was heading that studio, he says, you sit today. And I was like, no, I love being behind. I don't like being in the forefront. I love being at the back. And I thought I was too young. I'm very young in the organization. I'm talking 15, 16 years back. And so there was a lot of resistance, but he kept pushing. He said, Karke dekhlo. let's see what happens. It just happened. So there's not been any plan, any programming, any desire, any wanting, any seeking, nothing. It's all just been coming, I think. It's all just been coming to me. <clears throat> and so we just sat on that chair the first time and it was, I don't know how it happened. We just did eight episodes in one day, one after wow. the other. And at that time there was no social media, so it went on television. And they got a good response. It's simple. We could understand. And that day I experienced that it's not I who was doing it. It was a very deep experience that I don't know all this mm -hmm. that's come out in the content. And I thought it was a divine intervention. But I knew such things happen only once in a while. They can't happen every time. So I said, okay, very good. It's went off well. Now topic closed. We're not going to discuss this again. But because it got a good response, you say, okay, now we have to do it again. Yeah. I said, it won't happen again. These things don't happen every time. It's mm -hmm. just like one of those days. And then, uh, but of course they insisted, sat again, experienced the same thing again. Third time, the sister Kanupriya, who was the host, so I said, let's prepare something. We just can't sit on the chair every time like that. So we prepared what we will do today. And none of that came in the conversation that day. After that, we've never prepared. We just sit and it just flows and I'm the one who learns it first. Mm -hmm. So it's not that I'm sharing, I'm learning. So that's been the journey about 15 years now. Wow. Sister, I want to pick up on a point that you spoke about. I, I do believe that divine signals comes to everyone. You know, but either we're too busy doing something, wanting something, thinking about something, that it passes. Mm. And like you said, that sometimes, like, even when I started off, my first case, which I was successful at, I thought it was luck. Mm. And then luck. But yes. then over the years, I've begun to think that, like, if anyone has a gift, which everyone has, it's the divine that's coming to you. Yes. The more you use it, I believe the more it comes. But if you block that gift out... Yes. You know, I want to pick up on the point also that you spoke about science. Mm. You know, I'm a huge fan of science, but mm. at the same time, you know, sometimes I feel the world today will only do something if science has said it can happen. Now, I know we should do that when there's medicine, nutrition, yes. things that can harm you. Yes. But things like prayer, yes. faith, religion, all of these different energies, there is no science. It's how we feel. It's how we create things. And what's your take on that? How would you... You know, how would you speak about being mindful about science today, but also trusting our inner instinct? Like a lot of people today, you know, they have relationship problems. Mm. And they'll speak to 10 of their friends to decide whether I should continue in this relationship yes. or not. And they're scared to make a decision because maybe they fear rejection, disappointment of the wrong decision. Yeah. How do we build a connection to start trusting our inner instinct? You know, that voice, the divine within us. So initially, when I started understanding spiritual principles, I thought it was not scientific. Scientific means it couldn't be proved. Mm -hmm. But now on this journey, I've understood it's very scientific, but science of the inner world. So two sciences. One is the science of the outer world. So science of the outer world would be based on everything that you can prove and everything that you can see. Everything yeah. that you can see. Science of the inner world is about everything that you can create, and you can experience. And when you experience something, you don't need proof from anybody else because your experience is your proof, proof yeah. right? So even if I have to explain to somebody that, you know what, when I did this program, I was not doing it, but I can't prove it to anybody. How many other times I may have shared, how many other times I tried to tell the person who was in charge, you know, I don't think it will happen again because I was not doing it. They were like, yeah, yeah, we understand, we understand. But they're not understanding. Mm -hmm. Nobody can understand it because your experience will be your experience. But once you have experienced, you don't need proof because experience is the biggest proof. So now when we come to the science of the outer world, it changes from time to time. Mm -hmm. So today, if medical science is telling us something, 
tomorrow they will study it more because mm. it's a continuous study so tomorrow they will study it and the next year they might tell us something else so the science of the outer world can change the science of the inner world is experiential mm -hmm. it's not going to change tomorrow i could have another experience but my this experience is my this experience so i have now started believing it's very scientific Mm -hmm. It's extremely scientific. It's just that I have to use that science, which means if I hear something, like if I learn from you, okay, power of faith or power of meditation or power of prayer, then I'm not going to nod and say yes immediately. I said, okay, let me take it back now. Mm -hmm. So why the world called it unscientific? Because people were not experimenting it. They would just nod and believe it. Yeah. Then tomorrow somebody else will say something to them, they'll nod and believe that also. That is why people say this is blind faith. Mm. Blind faith because you were not experimenting it and making it your faith. You were taking someone else's faith and saying yes it works. No. Yeah. What worked for someone else may not be the same for you. Mm -hmm. And if you want to make it your faith, first experiment with it. So call it your belief. Then work with it. Experiment and when you experience, call it your truth. Hmm. Till then it's a belief. So if you're telling me prayer works, I say, okay, this is your belief. <coughs> Let me now take it. Now I will try it out. And I will do it with all sincerity, with purity of intention. I will do it. When I will experience that, then I will say, this is the truth. Mm -hmm. So it's a journey from belief to truth in between comes my experimentation and my experience. Once it's my experience, I can stand alone against the world. Yeah. Now let the whole world say, nah, what they want, yeah, yeah. Aise hai. Mm -hmm. I say, don't worry, it's not for you. I'm not saying this is universally right for everybody. I'm just saying this is my experience and now I can stand alone. Mm -hmm. But if it's only my belief, then tomorrow somebody say, no, 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 it's not like this, like this. I say, ha, ha. Another person say, no, no, ha, okay. So I keep changing. I keep changing. So it has to be experimented with. Mm -hmm. That's why it's very scientific. Yeah. Now, once I start experiencing that innate wisdom, we all have that innate wisdom. We all have intuition, which we call the inner voice. We all have a connection with the divine. But are we experimenting with it? I have to take out a little time to even experiment with it. But if I'm running, and running and saying, I don't have time. I don't have time to spend even 15 minutes just mm. being with myself. Then I'm not creating a relationship with myself. I'm not creating a relationship with the divine. So if I'm not creating a relationship with both, and then there is a challenge in my life, I don't have that relationship to talk about it. So I will only go to people with whom I have a relationship. Mm. So they go and talk to somebody else. So whether we're talking to family members, what do you think, should I do this, should I do this? Going to a counselor, what do you think, should I do, do this? Why don't you sit and talk to yourself? Because I never sat and spoke to myself ever. I've never spent with my time. So spirituality means first, a relationship with myself. And second, a relationship there. And once I experience these two relationships, anything in the world, and anything means let anything happen, I don't find the need to talk to anybody else. I've never gone and asked anybody for my life situations, that what do you think, should I do this too? No. Wow. Because at the end of the day, it's my karma. And the consequence of that karma is going to come as my destiny. And the way I'm going to face it is going to depend on my sanskar, my personality. So even if I take advice from somebody else, like even a simple thing like you said, should I stay in this relationship, should I not? How will the other person be able to decide? Mm. Because the other person will give you advice based on their personality. Yeah, right. So we meet so many people who come up with the same equation. What mm. question? Sorry. So we come up with so many people who ask this same question. Should I stay in this relationship? Should I not? So then we tell them, if I was in your place, I would have stayed. Mm. But whether you have to stay will depend on your sanskar, your personality. But if we tell them you stay, and they don't even have the strength to tolerate, to accept, to bend, then they will only suppress. And mm -hmm. if they suppress, they will create chaos for themselves. So no one can take a decision for us. So even giving advice to people has so sensitive now. Mm. Be very careful. Because even if you give advice, they will take it as their decision. Yeah. And they will say, so-and-so said it, and so I did it. Not taking moral responsibility 
and then not having the strength to face the consequence which that decision will bring and mm -hmm. then living a blame game even that time. Mm -hmm. So that relationship with the self is extremely important and that is what meditation does. Mm -hmm. Spending time with yourself and whenever anything comes up, just sit in silence with yourself because it's my karma, it's my past karmic accounts, only and only I know what is right for me. Nobody else would know, no one else. I love what you said, and that's something self-realization can only happen with self-practice. It's like the most common question we get. Should we intermittent fast for 16 hours or 18 hours? And we're like, what works for you? You need to experience it. But people want to take what's fed to them, and then it doesn't work. So self-realization and self-practice is the same with spirituality, is what Absolutely. I'm gaining. Yeah. Sister, you spoke about karma. Okay, I think this is a question I get from most of my dying patients. You know, like, Luke, was this my karma? And immediately, they'll say that I did this in life, now I'm being punished. Uh, whatever their thought process is at that point can actually be an obstacle to their healing when the onset of a disease comes. Because now, a lot of them say, I don't want to do anything because this is my karma, so I accept it. And I feel that, you know, part of our karma is now going through the process. Okay, even if we are being, I don't even want to use the word punish, but if it's my karma to go through traffic today, going through it is the process of fulfilling it. But a lot of people say they, they close acceptance yeah. and they're like, oh, this is it. You know, there's nothing I should do right now. I'm being punished. So they're like in denial. They don't want to move to an action and they want to hide behind this karma not to take right action. But there are so many different misconceptions because I've also, you know, seen children die like six months, a year, a year and a half, and they've not had time to do anything bad. You know, I would love for you to break down karma because I know a lot of people watching this are people who are suffering and I do believe that they need to find that strength and courage to go through it and fulfill it rather than be in denial or say there's nothing that can be done because I did this in life, I'm suffering right now. I would love for you to talk about that. Karma doesn't mean punishment. Mm. Punishment is not the word at all. Mm. We should never use that word. So when we say punishment, it's as if somebody is punishing me. Yeah. No. Karma just means here is my action, here is a consequence. Mm. So consequence is the word, mm. not punishment. If mm. I use the word punishment, I'm going to be very harsh with myself. Yeah. And then I'm saying as if something wrong is happening to me, it's a punishment. Even going through an ailment, mm -hmm. even like cancer, we know so many people who after a few years have said that was the best, best. thing that happened yeah. to me. So it was not a punishment, right? Had that not happened to me, I would have continued with my same lifestyle, mm. not taking time for myself. Just because of that one thing that came into my life, it's changed my lifestyle. It's changed the way I perceive my life. I value my life more now. And not only my life, it's changed the life of my family. Everybody's lifestyle changes when someone goes through a therapy mm -hmm. or through healing there. So how can we call that a punishment? We call that a gift. Yeah. We will call that same ailment a gift. It all depends on how I'm looking at it. So first, the word punishment goes out. Mm -hmm. It's not punishment. It's my karma and my consequence. Karma is what I do. Karma is not what comes to me. Mm -hmm. Karma is what I do. So every thought, word, behavior is an energy that I create. That is karma. Mm -hmm. So what I'm creating is karma. So every thought, not just words and behavior. My thoughts, my intentions, my words, my behavior is a karma. So it's like a ball which I throw out. Now while I'm throwing it out, it's completely in my control. How I'm going to think about you, how I'm going to talk to you, how I'm going to behave, completely my choice, my control. So when I'm throwing the ball out, it's completely my choice and my control. Now the ball is going to hit there and it's going to come back. Mm. When it comes back, that's the consequence. So then I say, this is a return of my karma. This is a return of my karma. So look at everything that we have today. It's a return of a lot of beautiful karma that we've done. Yeah. Lot of beautiful karma. Some way I made a mistake, intentional, unintentional, some thoughts which were not right, some behaviors which were not correct. That energy is also going to return. Mm -hmm. But that is a return ball. So now if I just visualize this, karma ball thrown out, consequence ball coming to me. Mm -hmm. But where's the power now? That when this consequence is coming to me, now consequence will come in terms of situations, mm -hmm. people's behavior, 
even the health of my body yeah. is a consequence of my past karma so it's going to come to me how i will respond to it now is my present karma so my present action that yeah. i'm going to so take my present Rupa. action yeah. so even if it is how i think about it is my present karma hmm. so yesterday i did something which was not right today the consequence of that is coming to me but the power is not in what's coming to me the power is in how i respond to what is coming to me hmm. so what is coming to me is a return of my past karma but what i'm going to do now is going to be my present, present karma. karma so the power is always in the present karma and what i'm going to do now is going to become my future because this is my new ball which i'm throwing now right so let's say even cancer or anything hmm. it's a return of my past karma past karma means somewhere i've not created the right lifestyle emotionally maybe not the right lifestyle mm -hmm. physically whatever may be the reason it's a karma which i had thrown out it's come to me today as an ailment how i think now feel now eat now live now and of course i take my treatment it is my present yeah. karma and what i will do now with my lifestyle not just during the treatment after that is going to decide my future mm -hmm. so some people even when they come out of it and they completely cure then they carry a thought what if it happens again yeah. because so many people have said that to them they've read about it somewhere if i carry that thought that what if it happens again that itself is a wrong karma mm. i've just healed my body everything is perfect doctors are telling me i'm perfect now what should be my new thought my new thought should be my karmic account is over never to happen again mm. my body is perfect healthy and it's always going to be so i have a choice now which thought to create yeah so this or that both are my karma so the focus is always on the present karma so past is coming to me present is getting created future is getting decided all three aspects of time are working always always so whatever happens let the worst happen you know when someone's going through a physical ailment they feel they are suffering a lot but someone could be physically perfect but could be emotionally suffering Still a lot right. yeah physical <clears throat> ailment is easier to handle it's easier to handle mm -hmm. emotional because physical ailment there's so many people to take care of you there's medical science taking care yeah. of you emotional suffering you alone only have to go through it so we should not use the word suffering mm -hmm. that the word suffering is also a new karma every word that i attach is changing my vibration mm -hmm. is changing my vibration if i say i'm going through a magical experience there's a whole energizing that's going to happen through my body there's a whole cleansing that is happening this is a new chapter that's opening in my life your whole energy with which you respond to the situation is going to change instead of saying this is a punishment say this is a gift for mm -hmm. a new way of living so that's my thought it's my intention it's my word it's my behavior my present karma will turn out to be right and it's also a time for me to explore was there any emotional clutter that i had been holding on to for very long someone i was not able to forgive something i was not able to let go something i was not able to release so medicine will heal my body but there's no medicine which is going to create clean my emotional clutter so it's also a time for me to go through that so when we say lifestyle you know because doctors will say take care of your lifestyle so the word lifestyle only is looked as eating mm. sleeping exercising yeah. that's not lifestyle that's only the visible part of lifestyle the word lifestyle is coming from the word life mm -hmm. life is here yeah. when this life leaves this is a dead body mm -hmm. so lifestyle means the way i think mm -hmm. the way i feel the way i speak the way i work the way i live that's all lifestyle it's not just eating drinking sleeping exercising that's very small part of lifestyle so i have to change my way of thinking my way of responding to situations let go in one second don't say i cannot forgive i cannot forget who are you harming yourself, yourself. what they did to you was their karma you holding on to it is your choice mm -hmm. that is your karma now if someone reflects on their life and they say no i'm not holding on to anything i've never had a bitter experience in my life my lifestyle in terms of eating exercising was perfect then why cancer mm -hmm. or then why any ailment then i also need to remember karma is not of the body karma is of the soul mm -hmm. karma is of the soul so when i 
just recheck my life and I say, I've never done anything wrong to people because nobody is going and doing like wrong, wrong that way to people. I said, I've never done wrong to people. Who's the I who is saying this? That I is the energy which is using this body, mm. which spiritually we call the soul. So when I leave this body, body is no more, I, the soul, enter the womb of a mother and new costume. So you say some children are born with a disease. Yeah. Some children are unwell at the age of one, two, three. They've not done any karma. They've done a lot of karma. They've not done any karma in this new costume. Mm -hmm. But the soul has come with all their karma. So it's the journey of a soul. Unless we understand it's the journey of the soul, we'll never understand karma. Because then we're only checking it after I've worn this dress. My karma is not after I've worn this dress. What I did yesterday will come as a consequence today. Similarly, what I did in another dress before I took this dress will also come as a consequence today. So the karma is of the soul. Now if I the soul and you the soul meet today, there's an interaction. Suppose I don't behave right with you. I've created a karma. It ends up in an argument. Okay? A month later we meet at some program, some event somewhere. You're not going to be your normal self with me. Mm. Carry forward of my Previous, past yeah. karma. So this I will say has come as my past karmic account. Now that day also I don't even look at you. So my second meeting with you also gets. And then the third time we meet, it's only going to get worse. So every next time we are meeting the same soul, it's only going to get worse. It's only going to get more and more complicated. Till in one of the meetings, one of us has to say, how are you feeling today? Mm. That's it. So one of us will have to change and the karmic account will change. Beautiful. So what we can understand as one meeting, second meeting, third meeting, same happens with one soul and another soul. One meeting in this relationship, if you don't resolve it now, when we meet next, it will start with that undercurrent. Yeah. And that's why we are saying, why a husband-wife relationship complication? Why a parent-child relationship complication? It's not husband-wife, parent-child. It is a soul with another soul. We've met before. We are meeting again. If last time was perfect, this starts on a perfect note. If last time was not, it starts not on a very good note. But the power is not what happened in the past. The power is still in the now. So change your karma now. So when someone is not right to me, even in a relationship, let me remember, it's a ball coming from there. I've thrown it before. And that's why many people go in for a past life regression. Mm -hmm. Don't need to. Mm -hmm. Don't even need to. Just understand it. Yeah. Because even if you come to know what you've done in a past life, you still have to work on the present. So why do you need to go and find out? Nature was meant that way that we're not supposed to know the past. Mm. That is why a child at the age of three or four starts forgetting the past. Children all remember the past before that. By the age of three and four, they start forgetting the past. Some children remember their past mm. and they talk about it. So we don't need to go in for a past life regression. We just need to understand this is a consequence of the past. Power is in my present. So the action I take now. Absolutely. Yeah. But thought, word, behavior, not mm. just behavior. Thought, word, so if I know, okay, this relationship is not right. It's my past karmic account. So I behave right with them. I speak right. I think right for them. Mm. I feel right for them. I can't be bitter inside and be nice to them outside. Not right karma. The number of words we speak are a few thousands. The number of thoughts we create are millions. So there's more energy that's flowing from there. So whatever happens in our life, the power is still in the present karma. Mm -hmm. So, why did this happen to me? Just say one line. My past karmic account has come to me. Power lies in my present. I will create a miracle with this. And start. In those cases where there's no treatment and we've come to a stage where doctor says or medical science says and everybody says that they can't do anything about it. In those cases also, if the soul takes care of their mind, keeps it higher vibrational, they can do miracles with their I body. In terms of at least extend yeah. and change what medically predicted. If in a case that is also not happening, then all the more important, 
that the soul has to leave on a happy note. Mm. Yeah. Because now it's an important journey which is beginning. So don't look at this as the end. Look at it as a new beginning and now prepare yourself for that new beginning. So if I am practicing soul consciousness during my journey of life, then leaving is very simple and allowing somebody to leave with dignity is also very beautiful. Yeah. So it's not only the one who's going through it, it's also the whole family, not letting them go. Yeah. If they've reached that stage where just last month I was in the ICU to see someone and there was a patient gone through cancer, chronic, everything, medical science, closed chapter. It's just like a body lying there, no movement. I spoke to the doctor. He said, mm. Amari taraf se everything done. The daughter was there. She was crying. I said, what thought are you creating for him? She said, I want him to be in peace. I said, but what does that mean? I want him to be in peace. I said, you'll have to let him go. Oh, yeah. And she started crying. She said, why should I be saying that? I said, why, sh why not? If you love him, you don't want to see him like this, you know, trapped in this body. He was just trapped in the body. The soul was not leaving, just trapped. So I said, Chal, let's start saying some things to him. And she just kept saying what I was telling her. I said, just tell him, no, this costume is not good. Your new body is ready. And most important, you don't have to worry about us. Yeah. You know, the soul is there because they're worried about the family. I said, so tell him everything about your family and tell him that how everyone will take care of everybody and he doesn't need to worry about us. And say thank you, gratitude, blessings. This we did at about 10 o'clock in the morning. Mm. And that night they decided, no, that evening they decided that they will take him home and let him be at home. Before he went home, he left. It wow. all happened in the same, and he was in that state for over a month in that ICU. It's the soul. We keep looking at the body. It's the soul's journey. And we are holding on saying, no, you cannot go. You cannot leave us. Yeah. How will that soul go? So we have to shift from attachment to love. Mm -hmm. Attachment <laughs> means you should be here for me. Even though you don't move, you don't speak, I'm very happy. I can see you. This is attachment. This is selfish. And love is what's right for you mm -hmm. should happen. What's right for you should happen. And in that one month, I saw this with three people. Three people did this and the soul left on the same day. Mm -hmm. That's <clears throat> how simple it is. That's how beautiful it is. Because we le let that soul live with dignity and leave with dignity. Yeah. But all this will, we'll be able to do if we understand I'm not just a body. It's my body. So then now when the soul leaves, enters the womb of the mother. Lot of karma. Mm. So the soul entering is not a clean slate. It's full of karma, full of sanskars, and that decides the new body. So when that body is getting created in the womb, it depends on which soul has entered. Yeah. Because that soul has come with their karma. So whether it's a perfect healthy body, whether it's a body where some organ is not perfect, everything dependent on karma. And the family whom they've left behind, very important role, that what vibrations they are sending. And the family where that soul has come in the womb, very important role. So even in terms of health of the body, two families are playing a very important role. The one whom the soul has left and the one where the soul has come. The one whom the soul has left need to send prayers, meditation, gratitude. Gratitude. And the only thing that the soul wants to see is they are perfect. Mm. They are fine. They are settled. Normally what we are taught, it will settle with time. But that time that we take, six, seven months here, is the time in which the body gets created over there. So it's not fair to say, leave me on time and I'll get okay. Get fine. Come on, hurry up. Start changing your thoughts because the new costume is getting created there. Send a lot of blessing. Instead of saying, how could you leave me and go? How will I live without you? You have to come back. You have to be around me. Yeah. Imagine all this is reaching mm. the soul. Why so many miscarriages happen? Why? The soul suddenly doesn't want to be there. Mm. Because the soul is getting pulled. No, you have to come back. You have to come back to me. So this they say for a few months. And in those many months, the body is getting created. Yeah. So immediately, thank you for every moment that you were with me. Thank you for everything that you have taught me. Don't worry about us. 
we will take care of everything, your work, family, everything. Lot of blessings for a new body, new family. That's how the family behind has to take care. And now the family where the soul has entered, predominant sanskars get created in the womb of the mother. So lifestyle of an expecting mother yeah, yeah. is a very big factor in the emotional, mental and physical health of the child. So if the mother is going through trauma, fear, anxiety during those nine months, you will see traits of that in the child. If not immediately, even after 20 years, 30 years. Feeling of not being accepted, feeling rejected. Mother was going through that. Mm. So you just have to go and ask your mother, what were you going through in those nine months? And you'll see a connection. And then it becomes easy to understand your nature. Mm. Okay, why am I feeling like this? Okay, like this. Okay. So when I understand I'm a soul, then I'll understand all this. But if I only see myself as a body and then I say, no, but I haven't done anything wrong, mm -hmm. then why is this coming to me? Okay, God is punishing me. Yeah. No. Why will God punish anybody? Why? God is like a parent, unbiased, mm -hmm. always there to teach us what is right, give us love and power. Karma is always ours. Wow. Karma is always ours. Sister, you know, we had several cases like that. I remember this one case, bone cancer patient like waiting to go. I remember even the doctor saying, why doesn't God take this patient away? Because mm -hmm. you could even touch the patient and he was in incredible pain. So I was looking at this case and one day I got this, this question came up. Like I said, I'm a huge believer of what you say. A lot of what I say and do, it's not me. I know it's not mm -hmm. me. <laughs> I know, yeah. I know what my, yeah. you know, abilities are. And I just asked this question. I said, is there anyone you are yet to forgive anyone who you hold a grudge. And he said, my brother. Yes. And the family call, I said, see, there's just only one thing you need to do. I don't know what's gonna happen out of this. Yeah. Call the brother, make your peace. The brother came two days later. He was in Gujarat, the patient was in Bombay at Jaslok Hospital. Yeah. They spent time, they cried. An hour later, he passed away. That's An hour later. I remember that happening and I mean, I, I like to lead by example. I'll give you the case of my own dad. My dad expired about five months ago. Okay, so he had a very mild cancer, which was probably old age, but he was being treated. He was going through his own suffering. There was no treatment at home. Mm. And across us were his sisters. There was some family property fight mm. that had gone on for years and years. So they were not on talking terms. Mm. I, I can't use words like hatred, hostility. Yeah, it was just yeah. like common property issues, Absolutely. not talking. One day my mom calls me up, I think I was in New York, and she's saying, dad has just walked out of the house and he's gone across to his sister's place, which he hasn't done for years. They were not talking, they were not on talking terms. And he went across, so my mom, you know, sent my brother, went across, and he just went there and sat. His sisters apparently, this is how my brother related it to me, they didn't know what to do because they were surprised, yeah. but they welcomed him. Yeah. They probably knew that he was sick, I mean, it's a village, they spoke, he started going more often and my mom was like, how do I handle this? Like, just let it be, yes. let it be. Yeah. And I'm telling you after that, he lived, but the suffering all stopped. He lived, he died peacefully in his sleep, which I believe is a nice yeah. way of going. But all that suffering before that he had, whether it was mental and he, I don't want to leave you all behind, who will look mm -hmm. after you all, all of those things, it all disappeared. I think his last few months were the most beautiful. beautiful. And I, the only thing that comes to my mind was he, close that cycle. He closed that cycle. most important is not yeah. just suffering then. Now, if he had not done this. Yeah. Okay. So one is when he resolved all that. So he released the resentment. Hmm. So one is I can release the resentment which is within me. But if I go there and I start talking, I'm also helping them to release the resentment. Yeah. So it's not me creating that energy anymore. And it's also not me receiving that energy anymore because hmm. the other side will also resolve it. So when he's done that, Life became comfortable, no yeah. suffering. Most important, he's left the body after having settled that karmic account. Mm. Now, had he not done that, okay? Had he not done that, he would have carried that grudge, that yeah. resentment. The soul behind whom we call sister now would have also had that grudge and that resentment. This soul would move forward, enter the womb of a mother, a new life will start. This soul will also someday leave the body go somewhere else, one day they both will meet again. Mm. And when they will meet again, it would have not been a very beautiful relationship. 
And then we say, why is there so much problem in this relationship? Because yeah. I did not resolve it last time. I did not. Now, whenever they will meet again, it will be beautiful. So it's very important. Mm. But we don't know when we we'll leave this body. Yeah. So we should always keep everything clean. Yeah. Very clean, very clean. Even if you're not getting the same thing from the other side, doesn't matter. Yeah. Keep your karmas <laughs> right. Keep your intentions right. Me forgiving someone doesn't depend on what they have done. It depends just on my thought. I forgive, I release, I let go. Finished. They could have done yeah. the worst that anybody can think of. There was a sister who came to the center. She was abused when she was five years old. She blamed her parents for it, like a little child thinking yeah. the parents didn't take care. So not a very good relationship with parents mm. in her mind. Not trusting people, didn't want to get married, just wanted to be alone. The world is not a nice place. Yeah. You know, that whole thing that that soul had carried right from the age of five. Mm. And then she, when she came to the meditation center, she was about 30, 35, something like that. And one day she just came out of the meditation room and she said, what did that person do to me? That person only abused my body. That too when? 30 years back. Mm. And who's abused me for 30 years? I. Yeah. I have abused myself for 30 years. He only abused my body. Today I release him from my mind. Yeah. That is, that's what it is. We're not saying what that person did is right. It's just saying, what am I doing with myself? Mm. So what our response to yeah. everything. So what yeah. that person did to me is part of my karmic account. What I do to myself now is part of my present karma. So always focus on the present karma. Mm. That my present karma should always be right. Then my past karmic account won't affect me so much. Even simple thing like someone has 100 fever, but suffering is a lot. Mm. Oh, my bimaru, my bimaru, I'm not well. Someone going through cancer, happy faces. Yeah. Yeah. Happy faces. Nobody would even know that they're not well. Mm -hmm. So who's suffering more? Yeah. So who's suffering more? So the past karmic account of the cancer is bigger, but the present response is happiness. So the present suffering is not there. In the 100 fever, you can't even call it a past karmic mm -hmm. account, but they're suffering so much. So power is always in the present. And our always. response. So that's what's within our control. Yes, completely. The response, yeah. Completely. So even if there's an ailment, even there is a relationship issue, even if there's a business crisis, it is a past karmic account. How are you going to think about it? But then when you practice daily meditation, mm. daily spiritual principle, then you know how to think right. No? Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we're just reacting to situations. We're yeah. not responding. We don't, we've not been taught. We've not been taught this actually, that we have to respond to the situation out of our choice. We just react to what the world is giving to us. Mm -hmm. So if I'm not getting a good energy, I'll react with the same. Yeah. So then I complicate my karmic account. So it's like first meeting, second meeting, third yeah. meeting, it gets more and more complicated. So now if you see things are happening in the world where people are saying like, how can this happen? Never heard of this happening before. It's getting more and more complicated. Mm. Sister, you know, there's a lot of science and there's a lot of information about suppressed emotions. You know, not daily stress. Like, it's wrong to say daily stress is going to cause a cancer. But suppress deeply rooted emotions. This information and science would come to me. My patients would ask me about this about nine or ten years ago. I was of belief there was a connection went into science because a lot of people don't believe it otherwise. Today, I'm 100% convinced. And why I'm so reassured about it? Because there still is no science. There is a lot of science showing there are causes between it. Still more evidence is required. Mm -hmm. But the point is today, our patients come to an as, and they say, because I've spoken about this before in videos about, you know, be, be careful of deeply rooted emotions. They have to come out. Today, 99% of our breast cancer patients, ovarian, any reproductive, hormonally driven cancer, they come and say, Luke, I know exactly why I have my cancer. When it started, even before diagnosis, because it's always going on in the body before. Yeah. Today, 99% of our patients come with that. And then we go back and it's a deeply rooted emotion. Not one like my husband fought uh -huh. with me. None of that. Deeply, deeply rooted. Unforgiveness, resentment, yes. bitterness, guilt. Yes. And so I'm so reassured. I was waiting for that signal 
Yeah, I'm not waiting for science to come and tell us whether it's right or wrong, because either ways, it's part of your healing. You know, take your chemotherapy, take your radiation, change your food, exercise. But what are you doing with those suppressed emotions? Because we can see, we can see normal people today, when they're stressed out, they fall sick. They feel better about themselves when the stress is less. So it is a genuine problem that people struggle with, unforgiveness, which then becomes bitterness. So some people say, hey, look, I'm feeling bitter. So where does the bitterness come from? Unforgiveness. Mm -hmm. What are some of the techniques or the easy ways that you would suggest someone to start their journey? Because usually the first response is, but how could she do this? How could he do this? Why would they do this? And you know that becomes the obstacle to moving towards the right action. So how would you guide us with simple steps to anyone who's struggling with forgiveness today to start that journey? I know it's difficult. I don't want to take away from people's pain of what happened. Yeah. But what's that beginning journey? But again, what happened? But now what am I doing to myself? myself yeah. So what happened was not in my control at that time. Maybe how I responded at that time was also not very right. But now looking back, at least I can change my response now. Mm. So at that time, I created a thought which said, I can never forgive them. Yeah. You know, that's a thought. That's an instruction that I've given into my subconscious. I can never forgive them for what they did. Leave alone forget. Forget is out of the question. How can I forget what has happened in my life? But I can never forgive. Sometimes people around us also say the same thing. How can you forgive that person? You should not forgive that yeah. person. You know, this is the kind of advice that we will get. Mm. Because if you forgive that person, they will do the same thing again. So no, don't forgive that person. So it's a very deep programming that goes on inside. And so I have told my mind, I cannot forgive. I have told my mind, I should not forgive. And I have told my mind, I will not forgive. So that's an instruction that I have given. Simple. So what do I have to do? I have to change my change. instruction. Yeah. First, why should I forgive? For myself. Yeah. I'm not doing a favor to the other person. It's for my mind. It's for my body. It's for my energy. It's for my now relationships. It's for now my life. I'm doing it for myself. People believe that when they're forgiving somebody else, they're doing it for them. It's not for them. What they have done to you is their karma. And their karma and their consequence is now with them, even if the whole world forgives them. Even yeah. if the whole world says, I forgive you, we forgive you, the consequence of the karma will always come. Mm -hmm. Will always come. So we are not really forgiving anybody else because they have created a karma and that consequence is with them. We are forgiving ourselves by saying, I forgive. Which means, I release the hurt and the hatred. It's nothing about the other person. It's completely about me. When I say I forgive, I'm saying I'm cleaning here. And when I say I forgive, it means I'm changing the energy which is going to flow from here to my body. Yeah. Who am I doing it for? Myself. I'm not doing this for them. I cannot forgive them actually. There's mm -hmm. no concept of forgiving other people. Because if I say I forgive you, then I'm saying the consequence of your karma will not come to you. That's not in my hands. Mm. That's not in my hands. They've sown the seed, the fruit is going to come. Yeah. I cannot go and uproot that fruit. Our karma and our destiny walks with us, not other people's karma does it walk in my destiny. And my forgiveness cannot change their destiny. Mm -hmm. So we're not forgiving actually other people. We were not taught it the right way. Yeah. We thought we are forgiving them. And so we said, why should I forgive somebody who's done wrong? But you're not forgiving the other person. Their karma, their consequence. Your karma, your consequence. Mm. So when I say I cannot forgive, I'm holding pain here. So it's like a wound which I say I'm not going to heal. I'm saying I'm not going to heal my own wound. I say I'm not going to forgive, I'm not going to forget. I'm not going to let go this. So I'm holding on to a wound. Now once I hold on to a wound, it's not only going to hurt because of that situation. I'm living with a fresh wound. So if I look at it physically, it's wounded here. And I say I'm not going to heal. Yeah. So how did I hit myself? With this flower vase. So I don't forgive this flower vase. I hold on to the wound. But this same hand has to be used for so much other work. And I'm not healing this wound. So it's going to hurt every time. 
and I don't realize that it's hurting every time because of this wound. Mm -hmm. So anybody who's holding on to emotions like this will become emotionally unwell. Their emotional immunity system will go low. Things will hurt them more. Their reactions will increase because they're not in their complete fitness as far as their mind is concerned. It's not a mental health issue, so it's not a depression or an anxiety, but it is an emotional health issue. So we are not forgiving the other person. We're very clear. Mm -hmm. I'm forgiving myself. So like I gave that instruction to my mind, I cannot forgive. New set of affirmations. I forgive. I release. I let go. Mm -hmm. And most important, when you understand it spiritually, why did they do this to me? My past karmic account. Mm -hmm. My past karmic account. I, the soul, and this soul have met before. And if they are sending this energy to me, Definitely, there was a past to it. So what affirmations we create for forgiveness is, my past karmic account is over. Mm. It's over. I release, I forgive, I let go. Third step, I radiate blessings to that soul. Mm. I radiate blessings to that soul because I want to change that karmic account. Same like you spoke about your father. Yeah. Same. I release, I radiate blessings to that soul, which means I clean myself completely, completely. That is why it's very important to understand soul, karma, and past karmic account, and future karmic account. Because if I don't forgive now, the wound is not only in this lifetime. It's in the next. Because the wound is not on the body. Yeah. The wound is on the soul. And so I don't know when I will leave, so I will leave with that pain. Mm -hmm. And then I will enter a new costume. The body is getting created, but I, the soul, am already carrying a wound. So what vibrations am I radiating to that new costume? Not the best energy. Then my new life starts. I already have a wound that I don't forgive easily. I don't trust people easily. I'm vulnerable. I feel rejected. So a lot of these emotions which we feel in our present life, are a carry forward. Yeah. So the parent loves the child, but the parent, the child will say, no, you like the sibling more than me. Mm -hmm. The parent has to keep on proving, no, it's not that. But it's not about the parent. It's not about the child. It's about that soul who carried that belief system saying, they don't love me. Somewhere that soul carried before. And now they've come and they say, they don't love me. Tomorrow they'll say with their partner, you don't love me. It becomes like a subconscious background yeah. music. And how would you change that then? Then change the affirmation. Everybody loves me. Affirmation. Everyone accepts yeah. me. I love everyone. I accept everyone. I have to change my background right. music. Yeah. Otherwise it starts coming to me in every relationship. It will come to me at work. Mm. It will come to me at home. It will come to me with friends. Because it's not the, it's like my little finger. I hurt it here. And I go and touch everywhere and I say, it's paining. I say, no, this is not hurt. I say, these are not right. Mm. Everything around me is wrong. Everybody's behaving wrongly. The wound is not there. Mm. It's here. So heal yourself. It's yeah. not for anybody else. Please, we have to tell ourselves, I'm not forgiving anybody. I'm not doing a favor to anyone. I forgive myself yeah. by releasing this. So we just write a few thoughts. Do them every single day, every morning, every evening before going to sleep. Subconscious mind programming mm. will change. It was just an instruction. We can reach a stage where just like what your father did, you don't just forgive, you actually create a clean energy. Mm. A clean energy. And you feel so light and then the body will feel better. So who did we do it for? Yeah. Who did we do it for? And I have to ask myself, Holding on to that resentment, whose body is getting affected? Mm. You know, here we say, it's okay, I can live with this resentment. Some people will say, I don't mind, I will live with this resentment. Okay, you can live, but the impact is going to reach the body. You want to go through something just because you're holding on to what somebody did? No. Every thought from here is a vibration which is reading, reaching every cell of the body. Mm. Every thought. So when I've held on to something, even if it's not in my active memory right now, it's there. It's radiating energy. Why? So forgive, live light, and then when we have to leave, then we leave light. We have to on travel light note. on this journey. Yeah, mm. very important. Thank you for that, sister. Sister, I wanted to talk to you about love in a different context. 
You know, it's been my observation that a lot of spiritual people, people that carry those energies, the ability to heal, the ability to inspire, who have been touched by the divine. Everyone's touched by the, by the divine. I just believe many people are blind to it. You know, is it that their hearts are able to love so much in the form of a pure energy? And that is why more spiritual leaders, I'm not talking about you, I'm talking in general observation. You know, they're not in relationships. I remember one spiritual leader who I had to treat many, many years ago from Delhi. And he made this profound statement that my heart is so large, okay, I can't contain the energy with one person. So I don't want to do wrong to one person. I don't want to be caged by one person. When I have the ability to want to give love in different ways to different people, which one person who's committed to me may not find it the right way may want my time, may want my energy, all for themselves. I've never really understood this, but off late, when I see people struggling in relationships, people struggling, of course, people struggle for wrong reasons. There can be affairs that are born out of greed, yeah. affairs that are born out of lack, of emotion, different, different reasons. Pleasure, very different. It makes me start to think, this whole word love, like, and I apply it again to myself, always. I like to apply it, self-realization. The way I love my mom yeah. is a very different degree mm -hmm. the way I would love my daughter, mm -hmm. the way I would love my father, the way I would love my sibling, the way I would love my... So there are different degrees of love. And then you're put into a box that love has to be this way. Of course, our minds are conditioned with love from movies and all of that is, of course, you know, uh, not real. But how do we understand this energy? Because I believe to solve a lot of these problems of betrayal, hurt, breakups, it comes from the understanding of love as an energy. You know, you meet someone, you like someone, you fall in love, it's an energy. That energy can change, it can grow, it can diminish, it can be expressed in different forms as we age. Right. So I feel a lot of the solution, if there is, comes from understanding this energy mm -hmm. of why some hearts are able to move in one direction, some hearts get pulled with a very right intention to want to give more to emotionally be involved in some problem. I'm not talking about the dirty part of it, which is a choice, again. I'd seek pleasure more over honesty. That's a different yes. thing. So I've always wondered about this and wondered if there's a reason why people who are able to serve people, they're not really in, like they don't marry or they're not in a relationship. It's in our, it's in our, our faith of you know, being a Catholic as well. You know, a priest doesn't marry. A priest is supposed to whatever, for whatever reasons. I don't know what the right answer is. Mm -hmm. But I would love for you to explain over the years of your experience, how do we understand this energy so we can harness it? Mm -hmm. We can channel it. When we lose it, even if it was not love, it doesn't destroy us. It doesn't become an emotional manipulative card that is also played in relationships. Mm -hmm. Oh, you don't love me, like you said. Oh, I'm going to take away my love because you did this. Right. I'm going to ration out my love because you behave badly. I would love your thoughts on this. When I understand my true self, I'm not a relationship. It's my relationships. Mm. I'm a soul who is playing that role of a mother, of a wife, of a daughter, of a sister. This is just a role. So, like acting. This is an actor and this is the role of that actor. So roles many. Actor same. Mm. Actor same. So who's the actor? I the soul. The innate nature of every soul is love. Yeah. Every soul has seven qualities. Every soul on the planet has seven qualities. Purity, peace, love, happiness, power, wisdom, and bliss. Seven sanskars of every soul. Every soul. Purity, peace, love, power, happiness, wisdom, bliss. And ask anyone, everybody wants these seven. Why? Because those seven are what I'm made of. It's like body made of five elements. So if that one element is imbalanced, I'll say, I need water, I need fresh air, because I need what I am made of. So to get that balance right. Similarly, every soul is of these seven qualities. Over a journey of many lifetimes, I've created lust, ego, stress, anxiety, and that whole list. That is not my original nature. So this is white, the original color. Throughout the day, a lot to do. By the end of the day, may not be as white. It will be stained. 
and suppose you also wear white, he also wears, she also wears and all of us start the journey wearing the same white. By the end of the day, everybody will have different stains, depend on how the journey of the day has been. But that little mistake, I thought the stain is my nature. The stain is not my nature. That original color, purity, love, peace is my nature. When I understand that, I don't need love anymore. Mm -hmm. I don't need love. I am love. It's my nature. How does it come out in action? Acceptance. Unconditional acceptance is love. When I want you to be a certain way, it's an expectation. Why do I want you to be a certain way? Because when you are a certain way, then I am comfortable. That means I'm dependent on you. Body consciousness, relationship consciousness, ego consciousness. So like you shared when a child, why is a child so attractive? Because a child unconditionally mm. accepts everyone as they are. The child can't make out this is the head of the family, this is a staff of the family. Equally sweet to everybody. But as the child is growing up, layers and yeah. layers and layers of you are so and so, they are so and so, they are lesser, this one is more, this one is higher, this one is lower. Layers and layers and layers of what we have acquired. But that is not who we are. So I was not taught that I am a soul and all this is only what I've acquired. I was taught all that I was acquired is who I am. Mm. So the body, I said, how am I looking today? I look at the body in the mirror and say, how am I looking today? It is not how am I looking today. It is how is my body looking today? How am I is here? I cannot see that in the mirror. Then I am a father. I am a doctor. It is not I. It is my relationship. So my whole consciousness was not right. The spirituality taught me I am a soul. This is my body, my relationship, my roles. Now go into everything to give because I already have what I want. Today we are going into everything to get. I want love. I want respect. I want peace. How will I get it when you do this my way? So how many couples you will find saying to each other, you don't love me? The other person says, how am I supposed to prove it? Yeah. Because you didn't do this this way. So love is not dependent on what you do this this way. Your definition of care and my definition of care can be completely different. Completely different. But we want the other person to be our way. So that makes every simple thing very, very complicated. So love is our original nature. It means acceptance, care, respect for every soul for every soul and the more you practice this you can experience that kind of feeling for everyone it's not going to be restricted to when i say i feel that only for so and so person that is not love that is attachment because of the relationship that i am in two words mm -hmm. are different it, that is attachment this is love love is an unconditional feeling it's radiating it's just who i am attachment is this one is mine mm. and so that is why I feel this for this person and then this person should be this way and if they are not this way then they don't love me. If the child didn't do what I say then that means they don't respect me. These are all my conditioning which I have created. But the more you truly start experiencing that you are love, you will start feeling that for everyone. So when we say people when they move on a spiritual journey, it's not that they don't want to get caged. It's just that they're finding a higher purpose of what they want to do, not what they want to feel. Mm. I am married. I am living with my husband. I'm living with my family. But that is not, that is not restricting me from what I'm doing. Yeah. So my doing and being is different. Being is how I'm feeling. Doing is what I'm doing. So some people will say, I don't want to just take care of one family. I want to be out there for the world, yeah. which is fine which is fine. But if you are with family, it does not mean that you cannot love the world the same way because that's just a part of the being. Mm. That's not part of the doing. When we say priest, nun, that we're talking about celibacy. Mm. Celibacy. Because when you want to rise above in your vibration, when you want to experience that soul consciousness, you rise above the body. So lust does not come as a part of soul consciousness. Mm. So that we're talking about lust. We're not talking about love. Right. 
We are talking about lust, not about love. So I am married for 26 years, but celibate right from day one. Mm. That's it. Yeah. So beautiful relationship. Beautiful. And somebody says, like, how can a relationship be without lust? We say it's the most beautiful relationship. Mm. But it is love, not attachment. Yeah. Not attachment, not putting each other down, not saying you have to be my way. It's a very beautiful relationship. Somebody has to experience it to see how beautiful yeah. it can be. Because we laid down physical needs as the fundamental foundation of our relationships. Mm -hmm. And that's why people are even going out into other relationships yeah. for that fundamental need of their body. And they believe it's a need of their body. But actually lust is in the mind, not in the body. It's not a need of the body. Mm -hmm. It's a thought process. It's here. And so you're trying to get it from so many different means, whether it's the content you consume, whether yeah. well, it's a craving of the soul, not of the body. It's a sanskar. It's lust is a stain on the original color of love. Mm. So when we say I don't want to get married, that can be simply because I don't want to get into lust. Yeah. But it does not mean that you cannot love these people and yet re love the rest of the world. That's not true. That's not true at all. Love is just, it's like a flower, like this flower. This is the original color, original fragrance. Keep it anywhere. Mm. Keep it anywhere. The flower is in its original color. But now if the flower starts saying, you didn't look at me. Mm. You didn't say I'm beautiful. You didn't come and touch me. And that's why I'm sulking. Then the original color of the flower will start changing. Originally, the flower is what the flower is. But the minute the flower starts having expectations, right now this flower does not have expectations from us. This flower is just blooming and giving to the world. Yeah. Giving what it is. Everything in nature is giving. Mm. Everything in nature is giving. The human soul nature is to give. Somewhere nobody taught us, so we shifted from, instead of giving, we were like... Taking. Yeah. So many couples nowadays, they say, we don't want to live with each other anymore. I say, why? I'm not getting anything in this relationship. So why should I be with this person? So I went there to get. I didn't get. So now I don't want to be there. Don't get into any relationship to get. Go into everything to give. So just like this rose. Now this rose will remain like this. Beautiful. Irrespective of you are sitting here, I am sitting here, somebody else comes, somebody else. who doesn't matter. Just being, being who you are. There. That's mm. what we have to be. Just be who you are, your original nature. The other person doesn't behave right with you. Be who you are. Yeah. Be your nature of love, respect and forgiveness. That is your nature. But somebody taught me I have to get love and respect. Mm. So I'm always looking at the other person. You didn't do this, so you don't love me. You didn't do this, so you're not respecting yeah. me. So I shifted from being a giver to this. Things got complicated. So love is my nature. Wow. Love everyone, everyone the same way, which means I'm a soul and I will look at everyone the same way. When I thought I was the body, then I was looking at the body. I was comparing mm. myself with other people. It's more prettier, more attractive. I am not. When I looked at myself as a relationship, I was looking at the other person as a relationship. What am I getting in this relationship? A husband should be like this. A son should be like this. You are not like this. When I was looking at myself as a role, I was looking at you as a role. This is all ego consciousness. Mm. That's layers of ego. That is not what I am. That is only the role that I'm playing. I'm a soul. Now go into every role, just being who you are. Life becomes very simple. So every time we actually compare ourselves, we're actually putting down our, we're rejecting us. Absolutely. At every level. At rejecting a soul level as well. Also. Rejecting the body also. Rejecting the body, which means we're rejecting the soul. Yeah. yeah. So when I reject my body, even then health will get affected. Yeah, that's true. Because I'm rejecting. I'm saying you're not right. Mm. You're not perfect. So such a strong affirmation. We look at ourselves in the mirror and say, I'm not perfect. I have to be perfect. This yeah. can be different. But again, a lot of conditioning, mm. media, content, yeah. what we're listening to. So we have yeah. to take care of what we consume. And that's why daily, if 10, 15 minutes we consume spiritual principles, thought process right. goes right. Yeah, that's true. It goes right. I always tell people, before you get onto social media, are you going in aligned yes. or already in chaos? Because that's, that's going to make... I still think social media can win. <laughs> it's too strong. But sister, you know, I want to pick up on two words, pleasure and lust. Hmm. 
at an anatomical level, at a body level. Okay, the brain cells are hardwired to seek pleasure, avoid pain. That's why most industries profit on anything that can give pleasure or avoid pain. Is there a difference? You keep reading this stuff about pleasure leading to spiritual connections, whether it's sexual, whether it's tantric. How do you explain this? And there's, of course, lust is intention. Hmm. I want to please the body. I want yeah. more. My mind is yeah. conditioned. Yeah. You know, someone's sleeping with 10 women. I want to sleep at 11. Someone's sleeping with five guys. That's lust. Lust is purely the focus on pleasure, on, on uh, the body experience. But what about pleasure? Hmm. Is there depth in pleasure? Is there? Because some, some relationships, some meaning, I've been... I've seen couples where they say our pleasure is at a spiritual level. Mm. It's physical, mm. spiritual, mm. and it's us. Mm. Is there a depth in this? It I know depends. some people can create it without sexual as well. Right. But can it also yeah. be there since reproduction is a part of the body and if people are really doing it with intention, yes. it can build such strong bonds between people? So if they're doing it with divinity. Yeah, with divinity. With divinity. Yeah. And that purity. That purity of intent, you know, so it's here. Pleasure is not outside. Mm -hmm. Pleasure is here. And the more I seek it outside, the more I get addicted to that substance, whatever that yeah. substance may be. Even a phone, I'm picking it up for pleasure, I'm getting bored. So yeah. I pick up the phone. Now it's become my addiction. Mm -hmm. So pleasure, when I try to seek it in anything outside, even in the body, even in what I eat, yeah. If I'm seeking pleasure through what I eat, then even if you tell me this is not right, I should not be eating it, I say, mm. but I can't live without it. Yeah. I can't do without my morning coffee. I can't do without this. There's strong statements we say, I can't do without this. What do you mean you can't do without it? Think today and drop it. Mm. No, I can't do without it. It's not that you cannot do without that substance. It says that you have got addicted to that pleasure that you are creating when you're consuming that substance. Yeah. Uh, sister, of course, we could go on talking for the entire day, but now that we've understood the soul journey, okay, how can we begin this journey? What are the simplest things that anyone watching this today from anywhere in the world decides that, hey, I want to reconnect, I want to connect, I want to enhance my connection with my soul and start living that way? How do we start this journey? First thing is commit a little time for yourself every day, preferably early morning. Mm -hmm. That's a good time where you've just woken out of deep sleep, your subconscious mind is active, what you will consume at that time will go deeper. Yeah. You know, Throughout the day, it's more on the conscious layer of the mind. So it's like I want to sow the seed, so I need to dig a little and then let the seed go deeper there. So the early morning time is always for meditation, mindfulness practice, spiritual study, yoga, pranayam, whatever everybody feels right. Sleep cycle is very important. You know, today people say, okay, I have to sleep seven, eight hours, doesn't matter which time that yeah. is. Mm -hmm. But that is not true. Mm -hmm. So why the 4 a.m. time is called the Brahma Mahurat, the Amrit Vela, it's a very high vibration time. So use that time. Mm -hmm. But for that, of course, sleep early. Oh, yeah. Sleep early and sleep deep. It's actually not, today the world is talking about the number of hours we are sleeping. But it's more quality. than the number of hours, it's the quality of mm -hmm. sleep. So in spite of having slept eight hours, People seem so fatigued early in the morning. I mean, this is the Delhi Gurgaon Expressway. You're there in the jam for an hour. I keep looking at everybody's faces. Mm. These are leaders who are traveling to work. They're feeling sleepy early in the morning. They've dozed off in the car. In a flight, on a flight you check, people are falling off to sleep. People can literally sleep through an entire flight early morning. You ask them, you didn't sleep last night? Of course I slept last night. And then they think it's a quality. I can fall off to sleep anytime, anywhere. Mm. If anybody can fall off to sleep anytime, anywhere, which means that they are sleep deprived. Fatigue, yeah. But they've slept, deep sleep. Mm -hmm. So the best part is disconnect from your work at least a couple of hours before you're going to go to sleep. Yeah. You, you have to shut down the files here. Mm -hmm. But if we are at work till we go to sleep, if we are checking our emails and messages even in the middle of the night, then I'm not going to experience deep sleep. So if I want to sleep at 10, by 8 o'clock I should disconnect from work, mm -hmm. which means work emails, work messages, business phone calls, everything. Give your mind that time to shut down content, information, early dinner, so that my digestion is over before I go to sleep. And then disconnect from media also, yeah. which means negative content. 
where there is lust, ego, panic, aggression, violence, fear, do not consume that content. Anyway, that content is not healthy, but definitely not an hour before I'm going to sleep. 15 minutes before I sleep for myself, mm -hmm. consume high vibrational content before that. So consume content of acceptance, of forgiveness, of letting go, because what I consume before going to sleep is going to work on my mind and on my body for the next six, seven hours. Mm -hmm. So it's very important. Then meditation or write your affirmations. So keep that 15, 20 minutes. Prepare your mind and body before going to sleep. Don't just fall off to sleep. So could I do reflection and silence also in yes. that 15 instead of yes. reading something? Yes, but no, okay. give high energy words. Got it. Which so. means because everybody gets used to using their phone before going yeah. to sleep. So I'm not <clears> going to end the day with negative words. I'm not going to end the day with looking at the number of likes on the social media post. Mm. Because I will go to sleep looking at the figure but during my sleep, my mind is again processing that feeling of lack of acceptance. That we won't know. Yeah. We know what happens here while we're sleeping. We also have to know what happens here while we're sleeping. So 10, 15 minutes, read something nice. Give your mind content which it will contemplate on. Then reflection, meditation, writing affirmations, whatever. Each one yeah. will choose their own. But once you've written your affirmations, then no phone after that. Mm -hmm. No talking to anyone after that. That's your last thought your last thought. Now your affirmations will get processed during the next six hours. And also those are those high vibrational words which are going to radiate to your body. So healing of the body is happening. Mm -hmm. So it's good to give it that good energy before I go to sleep. Then I automatically wake up at four o'clock. I don't need an alarm for that if I've slept deep because I slept the right way. Then use that four to five a.m. Again, meditation, affirmations, Again, spiritual study. Content is very important. Just meditation is not enough. Just meditation is not enough. Meditation is like exercise. And spiritual content is the diet. I mm. need both. Beautiful. I need yeah. both. So uh, just content is not enough. Just meditation is not enough. Both. So content gives me information of the right way of thinking. If I only meditate... It's not enough. I need to listen to this, that forgiveness is beneficial. Why is it beneficial? What is the thought process? So that creates the thought. Now I contemplate on that during my meditation. Hmm. So I have my meal and now I have to digest that meal. So that's why both are needed together. Hmm. So early morning and just before going to sleep, these two things are very beneficial. Then during the day, live like a Karam Yogi. Karam Yogi meaning you're doing what you're doing but you're doing it at a higher vibration. Yogi means a higher vibration. Yogi doesn't mean those who've left materialistic life. It means those who are living at a higher energy, which means don't use anger as your weapon to get work done. Do the same mm -hmm. thing with empathy and compassion. You're living at a higher vibration. Don't get irritated when something is not going your way. Be patient, it will get resolved. You're living at a higher vibration. So not just feeling peaceful while meditating, peace in action in action because meditation will be 15 minutes 24 hours you are in action so it has to be a meditative lifestyle not just meditation meditative lifestyle so that's a karam yogi living at a higher vibration sattvic food plays a very important role so not just nutrition of what i eat the vibration of what i eat is very important so we feel a vegetarian diet is extremely beneficial in terms of vibrations mm -hmm. and then cooked the right way, yeah. which means it's cooked with high vibrational words in the kitchen, mm. like how you cook in a temple or a church or a gurdwara. High vibration words are playing when food is being cooked because the food is going to absorb all those yeah. words. So we have people doing that at home. You can do it in your kitchen at home, have mm. high vibrational words, whatever you like, any prayer, any mantra, any chanting, anything, play it in the kitchen. Mm. It's radiating into the food, into the water, into the fruits, everything that the whole family is going to eat. Mindful eating, which means no gadgets, mm. no phone, no TV while eating. Before we eat, we start with our affirmations. So energize the food with your affirmation because when it was cooked, there are some thoughts which have gone into the food. And then many people say, I created my affirmations, why is it not manifesting? because you also have to do it with your meal. Mm -hmm. So we were always taught to pray before we eat. Yeah. So pray means create high vibration words before you eat so that you're changing the energy of your food. Mm -hmm. 
see where it was grown, which market it came to, then it came to the shop, then it came to my kitchen. There's a whole journey yeah. for that meal. So a lot of vibrations have gone. So affirmations before we eat. So just see simple, little, little practices and you will see your vibrations rising and you will see your ego going lower and your original self coming out higher, just like that flower. Wow. Sister, if you had the whole world listening to you right now at this moment, what would your message be for them? Stop living like a victim, blaming the world Beautiful. and blaming situations for how you're feeling because life is not about what's happening. Life is about how we are responding, responding. to what's happening. So just start prioritizing self-care. Love yourself. Don't wait for the world to love you. You need only one person to love you, yourself. You need only one person to be kind to you, yourself. If you are kind and loving to yourself, then you can be that to the world. But if you're waiting for the world to do that to you, may happen, may not happen. So take responsibility. That's called Atma Nirbhar, self-reliant. Self-reliant, not a victim to situations and people and what's going on in the world and what's the government doing. We can live like a victim forever. That's not life. Life is personal responsibility, self-care. Don't say I don't have time because if you say I don't have time for myself, then you don't love yourself because you always find time for people whom you love. So, and it's really Beautiful. not about time. It's all about yeah. priority. Mm -hmm. If you prioritize yourself, you will take out time. Don't prioritize yourself. You can live your life like a victim. So prioritize yourself, keep a little time for yourself every day, take care of yourself, same situations, you will sail through it like a beautiful divine experience. Same situation, situation won't change. People will not change. When you change, your world will change. Your world will change. It's very simple. Sister, thank you so much. This has been amazing. There are so many things we've learned and I'm really, really grateful to have you on this show today. Thank you so much. And I look forward to doing some more with you. Definitely. Because I still have so many more questions. Definitely. And I'm sure our audience will. Thank you so much, look sister. Forward. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Shukriya Upshan. Stay tuned for more. We're going to continue our journey learning, sharing and evolving. <laughs>